All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a project. This is a snowmobile skid off the Arctic Cat Pantera 550 Luxury Touring Edition ESR. And what happened was I got two of these sleds, and this is the skid that came off of the one sled that the previous owners were using as a part sled to keep the other one up and running and, you know, to where they could use it on a regular basis. So, as you can see, there's quite a few parts missing. Um, I took a tally of what I needed and ended up placing an order through 219 Snowmobile Parts in Indiana. And this is my first big order from them. I uh, have full confidence, though, that they provided everything that I needed. And we went over pictures and everything, so everything's good. So the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and open the box up. We're going to pull out all the parts. Um, I should have everything that I need. If I don't, it's on me. I'm going to go through and uh, just put idler the wheels on. You can see that obviously stuff like this, you know, the springs all blasted. Bet I don't know how that happens, but um, I got spring slides. I got axles. I have bolts. Um, I have even this assembly that goes on here. This is an overload spring assembly, and I have the parts for that. So. Yeah, we should be good to go. The whole point is just to get this skid to where it's functional because the sled that it goes on is actually in my snowmobile trailer right now next to my 800. And so I need that space. So I'm going to get this functional, put it on the sled, get the sled off, and then I can park it and back until I'm ready to go through it. So that's going to be the next step is to go ahead and lay the parts out and get everything ready to assemble. All right, so here's the box of parts. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And I ended up getting some stuff for a few other sleds as well, but <laughs> I got quite a bit of stuff in here. Uh, we got something heavy here. Let's see. Okay, so here's the overload spring assembly. Got a couple of windshields. Both the windshields, one of them was missing a windshield. The other snowmobile that was mostly functional has a windshield, but it's broken. So these are going to go ahead and go on both sleds. There's one good spring there. There's one axle with bogey wheels. Carb intake flanges for a 580 along with spacers, regular wheel spacers in here. And a bag of those. Have a set of motor mounts for a ZR580 and a ZR2 chassis. This will go to my wife's uh, towards my wife's sled rebuild. And we got a well, you can't really see him. This whole whole bag of idler wheels. Should be the rest of the axles. So we'll get all these parts laid out and take a look at them and go from there. All right, so I got all the parts out of the box. Uh, the only thing that I didn't get from them, other than the skid, was these two these two um, idler wheels right here. Which these actually came off of my 800, which is pretty interesting. So I capped those. Uh, obviously, I didn't want those on there. Uh, I wanted orange ones, which I did put. So these were extra. I found these in my, my idler wheel box. Um, so I got a bunch of uh, idler wheels. And I got some plastic sway bar arms um, they gave me a few axles I even got a br one brand new axle um, I got one spring slide I got some spacers for the idler wheels uh, looks like they threw in a couple of nice bearings as well so thank you got some spacers here and a couple extra nuts and bolts um, this is the assembly the torque arm assembly here um, I really only needed this, but they sent me the whole thing, which is awesome. And, of course, the overload spring and then the torsion spring. Both of these sleds are electric start and reverse. And they're both two up, and they're both luxury touring edition. So. And neither of them came with recoils. So I got two recoils from West Michigan Snowmobile Parts. Thanks, Keith and Eric Loudermilk. And... I got, I was in the process of placing this order with 219 snowmobile parts. That's Eric Ewan. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. But he shot me a couple of uh, handles. So, yeah, we're going to be good as far as that stuff goes. All 
All right, I had to modify this piece here. I didn't make it clear that I needed a piece that was uh, a two-piece assembly, so. Nuts and bolts, folks. some space or material like this right here but I do not and I need this whole axle so it goes there get that junk out of there this this
It's looking like a complete skid. time just to make sure it's all snug and I'm not gonna be driving this thing so like I said this is just to have it sit up to the point to where it can stand on its own All right, and the last two things are these front idler wheels and cleaning up these bolts. Let's see if these will swap out. Good deal, folks. Good deal. Now I can put them gray ones on here. These pop out pretty easy. Supposed to at least. And then all you do is you just put it in the vise facing down and you just bang it out that way. And when you, put, when you pop these in, you want to make sure that you hit it on this outside race. You don't ever hit a bearing on the inside race unless it's slipping over a shaft. And if it's going into something, then you want to hit that outside race. You don't ever hit the free race. And the reason being is you can, you, it'll just damage the bearing itself. There's a cage in there that holds all the bearings in, blah, blah, blah. Got to put the retainer ring back in, son of a gun. I like to tap them all in spots where I, you see a lot of the ring. Sometimes they don't seat in there, so if you just tap them in, that'll guarantee that the ring's seated all the way around. There we go. You know, that one snapped in all the way, so I don't have to worry about it. So you have a washer in front and back.
You gotta be careful. These things can get brittle too. So that's the old one. This takes a smaller bearing and it takes a different idler wheel. So I thought that's what I had, but you know what? Not the same thing. So no big deal. These fit right on. All right, so got it buttoned up. The only thing I'm missing here, which I will go through, I need some shims for both of these sides right here. So right there and down in there. But everything else is, uh, for the most part, good to go. I'm just going to loosen up these real quick. Hit those with some PB Blaster. And, uh, yeah, this is ready to, like I said, you know, it's not meant to be beautiful. It's meant to be functional. It wasn't a complete skid, and now it is a complete skid. All right, guys, that is it. We got all the parts on. Uh, like I said, this isn't made for beauty. It's made for function. Now I'll be able to put this up under the other Pantera sled that we got in the trailer, and then I'll be able to take that and move it onto the backyard to where I can store it on our lot until it's ready to be brought back in fully disassembled and refurbished. So, last thing to do is just to make sure I can get uh, bolts and all these and uh, go ahead and loosen up the track adjuster bolts and then go ahead and pop it in the sled. So, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you like what you see, like as well. Make sure to hit that alert bell because if you don't, you won't be alerted of future updates on the channel. So, make sure you do that. Drop in, say hello. You know, if you guys have any questions uh, about anything on this skid or any of my other videos, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. If I don't have the answer, I'll try and find the answer for you. So, yeah, share. If, you know, if you, if you guys know anybody else that likes this type of content, please feel free to share on social media and networking and uh, you know, share with your friends and family that you think might get a kick out of this sort of content. All right? We'll see you in the next video. So, come on back. Take care. God bless.